Oh, Nintendo. <laughs> you have to do things differently, don't you? And, uh, you know, I understand that in some instances, companies are forced into doing things in different ways to other companies just because of the nature of things. And in this case, Nintendo doing VR, they're a little bit restricted by the tech they've got to hand, namely the Switch. Uh, the Switch hasn't got the raw power to do VR in the same way as a PC or even the PlayStation. So Nintendo have done their usual thing and gone about it in a different way. It's interesting because they've kind of tried to incorporate VR into Labo. So the Labo sets we got last year where you, you know, create constructions out of cardboard and then put your Switch in them and, and make various toys like pianos and cars and you can play racing games and all that kind of thing. But now we've got the VR version and... I haven't really talked about this before because, well, I was kind of a bit meh. I wasn't really that interested. But it has kind of come to my attention now because this last day or so, we've heard that we're actually going to get Super Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild in VR. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you guys can see where I'm going with this but but basically for me I think there's a real problem here because if you look at the PlayStation VR one of the issues I've always had with PlayStation VR apart from all the crap that you have to attach to your head and the the nonsense you have to go through before you actually can get down and play a game is the resolution now PlayStation VR you can kind of forget the limitations in the resolution to some degree but it does restrict what PlayStation VR can do. And that will be more or less of a barrier to you depending on you know, your own personal preferences. I, I, I find it a little bit difficult to get past. Nevertheless, PlayStation VR is quite immersive and quite enjoyable once you do get past that limit in resolution. And it's not such a huge deal because it's 1080p, across two eyes so it's in half in, in effect when you transfer that over to nintendo's labo vr or, or their switch vr that becomes more of a problem because the switch screen which is what you're going to have to use to kind of hold up to your head and i'll get to that in a minute but that's 720p that means across each eye you're going to have 360p per eye now, I was looking at the video for this announcement on YouTube this morning, and it's 1080p 60. And what I did was, I actually went in and I changed it, and I changed it down to 360p. And when you change it down to 360p, the, the pixels on the screen become extremely obvious. They're very evident. So, it's going to be a problem. These games... They look great when you're looking at Nintendo's feed in 1080p, 60 frames per second. But the minute you reduce them down, they don't look as good at all. So that's the first issue. The second issue, and this is not an issue you have with the other VR sets, you know, like the Vive and the Oculus and the PlayStation VR, is that you're not actually putting a headset on. What you're doing is you're creating a cardboard crea creation and then you're slotting in the switch into this cardboard creation and then you're holding it up to your face. Now, two things there. I read, I think it was a, a Guardian article where the guy was saying, oh, you know, it's much better because you're not locked into this headset and, and all the rest of it. And my initial response to that was, well, that's why it's immersive. If you're holding this up to your head and, you know, you can just take it away at any time, you haven't got that immersion that you've got in VR, which is what VR is all about. You know, one of the reasons why you can forget about some of the issues with resolution with the PlayStation VR is because you are immersed in it. You are kind of in that world. When you're holding it up to your head, I can't see that that would be as immersive. And then when you factor in the resolution as well, that's going to be an issue. Now, the other thing as well is that, well, you're holding it up. 
So in order to play these games, you literally have to hold the switch up in front of your face and then you've got the weight of the switch and then you've got the weight of the cardboard added to that and the Joy-Cons if you're needing them for that particular use. So this is going to get tiring very fast. And again, in the Guardian article, the guy's saying, oh, you know, it's really good because you can play a bit and then you can hand it off to someone else to have a go and all the rest of it. But that kind of defeats the whole object for me. You know, you're handing it off to other people. One, you're losing your immersion, as I said before. But the other thing is you're going to hold it there and it's going to get extremely tiring. Now, maybe that's not going to be so much of a case when you're playing these, you know, the small little party games that you're getting in the, the VR Plaza game, which uh, I think has a load of mini games in it. That's not going to be such a big deal because you're going to have a quick blast, pass it on to the next person. That should be OK. But when you're playing something like Super Mario Odyssey or Zelda Breath of the Wild, you're going to be wanting to play those games for some time, assuming you can get past these resolution issues. And, you know, I, I already think that Breath of the Wild suffers to some degree from a, a lack of resolution and, and the power of the console has an effect on, on that game. It feels a bit empty to me. And I know some people disagree. But when you reduce the, the resolution to 360p per eye and then you factor in that you're going to have to hold it up, are you going to be able to play that for any length of time? I don't think you are. I think it's going to be a real problem. And then <laughs> the guy said, I didn't have any, any real effects on it apart from the fact that when I took it away, I had marks around my eyes. Yeah, from pushing the cardboard onto your face. I don't think it's going to be, be very practical for long gaming sessions at all. And so games like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, it, it's going to be a curiosity to have a go playing these games in VR on the Switch. It's going to be uh, something that you try and have a bit of a laugh with, but you're not going to be able to play for any length of time. So that's that's... That's a real problem for me. On the flip side of that, when you look at VR Plaza and all the mini games in there, I think it becomes a bit more interesting because, you know, all the stuff about handing it round, how that will work, I don't know. Because, again, as, as I say, you haven't got that immersion that you've got in VR. And the games do all look, you know, very small and, you know, party game-ish. And whether you like that sort of thing or not is down to you. But one of the interesting things there is that you have got, you know, a creative element to it. You can create your own games. And I really like that. And it looks to me like Nintendo are kind of going after the, the Roblox market. And my kid, my kid plays Roblox all the time. And I've commented before on the fact that we've got games like Forza Horizon. And yet he'll go on to Roblox and play some crappy little racing game rather than playing Forza Horizon. Don't get me wrong, he likes Forza Horizon, but sometimes he just likes to go on to Roblox. And personally, I don't get it. But he enjoys it. He loves it. And a lot of kids out there do. A lot of kids out there go and they play Roblox. And he's sat down and he's tried to create his own, you know, fairly basic games in the past. And it's something I want to get him to try again because he did enjoy it. And we had a lot of fun trying to create kind of rudimentary Roblox style games. So the VR aspect of the Switch and, and this VR Plaza and the ability to create your own VR games would seem to lock into that Roblox idea of very simple games that you can play. And, and you know... I could see my kid maybe getting this blaster that you hold up to your face and playing it and enjoying it. So, you know, maybe this isn't for me. And, and this is the, the interesting thing here. I, I think that while I have real issues with this, and I, and I think it's thoroughly unconvincing from my point of view, maybe I'm not the market. Maybe that's not who they're interested in. Maybe it, it will tap into that Roblox market and maybe, maybe it'll tap into the kind of we market as well. The sitting around with your family, just having a bit of a laugh for half an hour, an hour and then forgetting about it. Ultimately, I think this is a fairly throwaway thing. And, you know, maybe the price 
m might be something that stops people getting into it. But when you compare the price of this against, you know, most VR kits, which run into hundreds of pounds, then the Nintendo Labo VR kit, the Toycon 04 as it's called, is a lot cheaper. The full kit is 70 quid, 69.99. And the cut-down kit is $49.99. And I think you get a lot more with the full kit. You get the, there's a kind of camera thing that you can use on an arm. And there's a, a, a bird kit that you get with it as well. And and the gun as well on the in the full kit. And I think the cut-down kit, you just get the gun, and uh, which is built out of the Labo cardboard stuff. So, you know, the, I think the full kit probably looks like the the best one. Although, you know, I, I'd have to see it to see w w what one was the best one. But yeah, I, I, I kind of am in two minds about this. I think the resolution is going to be terrible. Looking at the video, as I said earlier, looking at the video and then reducing it to 360p on, on YouTube made me realise just how poor the resolution is going to be on this. Holding it up for any length of time is going to get extremely tiring. You're going to get a sore neck. Your arms are going to ache. So playing it for any length of time is just out of the question. So Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, I can't see anyone playing them fully all the way through in these modes. I just can't see it happening unless you're a complete masochist. But as a bit of fun with your family and as something creative that you can do as a kid, you know, tapping into the Roblox market and, and offering a kind of almost a, a kind of digital Lego approach to making games... I think it does have something there. I really do. So my initial feeling, when when this first was announced, my initial feeling was to just laugh at it. And I still, part of me still wants to just laugh at it. But maybe I shouldn't laugh at it. Maybe I should laugh with it. Maybe it is going to be a lot of fun. And if I pick it up, I'll have a look at it with my kid. And maybe I'll make another video. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to pick it up. It's not hardcore VR, let's be honest. But maybe it is going to be a lot of fun. So that's where I am at the moment. I'm kind of on the fence. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know, it's it's not PlayStation VR. It's not the Oculus Rift. <laughs> it's none of those. It's just not. It's going for a different market. But as I say, let me know what you think of this in the comments. Do you, do you think it's ridiculous? Do you think it's stupid, which was my initial response? Or do you think it might have something? And do you think it can be a lot of fun? Or are you like me and kind of stuck in the middle and can't make your mind up? It's out next week, so we'll know more about it then. And maybe some of us will get our hands on it and have a look. And then we'll know more. But for now, I don't know. It's Nintendo, isn't it? <laughs> and this is what Nintendo do. Right, anyway, that's me done. I will uh, speak to you in the next one. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and get myself a cup of tea. Bye.